Hey everybody, welcome to Producer Dudes. My name is Kalen, and I am going over how to edit drums in Studio One 5. I made another video a couple years ago. Uh, I think it was like 2018 now. Man, time flies like crazy. In Studio Studio One 4, going over the exact same thing. Um, I just felt like it was a good time to update it, uh, make sure everything applies to Studio One 5, and if people are searching for how to edit drums in Studio One 5 versus 4, they have a video to help them out. Even though you could probably transpose a lot of what I did in 4, might as well update it. You know, it was one of our most popular videos, and people seem to like it and uh, um, get something out of it. So, you know, why not? So let's dive right in. Okay, so I have a session here where uh, we tracked drums for a song for a cover from a band, Raven Hill, House of the Rising Sun. We did a really simple drum setup, and so I thought that'd be a great example for this. Um, up here, we just have just kind of a mixed down stem. Uh, without drums on it, you know, you get the idea. And then we had the drums that our drummer Josh um, did a great job recording. I just pulled together a very quick mix so, you know, sounds listenable. And as you can tell, he played pretty, pretty tightly. So I think one, a big thing is make sure you can get the best drum performance first that you can. Um, I feel like a lot of people are trying to just remedy a bad drum performance by drum editing. Uh, not to say that you can't fix a lot of things and not to say that you can't get somewhere with it. Um, it's just going to be a super big pain. And kind of my rule of thumb is drummers should have it about 85 at least percent of the way there. Just that extra 15 to 10 percent. That's on you to maybe, you know, if you want it to be to the grid, you know, if he's within that range, you're going to have an easy time and it's not going to be very difficult. Um, if it's pretty sloppy, I've been in those situations where it's extremely tough and tedious. And sometimes it's, you know, if it's bad enough, you know, there's no coming back from it and just need to redo it or have a different drummer play it. Something program drums definitely been there. I've had to do that before and it sucks. I'd rather just edit the real thing. So that's what this is for. I say the main things are I have these two tracks highlighted highlighted a different color. They're green versus blue. They're going to be our guides. So they're going to be the reference point for the rest of the drum kit. Um, you'll understand what that means here in a little bit. I think the biggest thing, if you're going up here and you hit this audio bend icon, it has this drop down menu, it has a few options. I think everything, this is how most of it uh, comes across. I think this by default is on quantize. The only difference there is it uses an audio bend function versus actually slicing the audio and uh, shifting it one way or the other. Um, I like the slice function just because it's not actually manipulating the audio track itself. Um, so I guess it stays more pure. Although uh, the algorithm in Studio One is awesome, the quantize function works great. Um, I would say if you're in a situation where it's a more difficult thing to edit and there's the drummer didn't play tight enough for it to either be shifted one way or the other to get it more accurate, you know, and you actually have to physically bend because there's too much like, you know, a uh, bleed, the quantize function might work better for you. But I try to, you know, I've mainly just had to use slice and that's what I prefer. Okay, so everything else I think is pretty stock. Um, you have your audio auto fade, 10 millisecond, auto fill. Um, that just fills the gaps. If there's like, when you're shifting audio backwards or forwards, you know, obviously it's, it's moving, so it's going to create a gap there. And that allows you not have to go back and manually drag each track to compensate for those gaps. Super helpful. Merge, I don't really use that. If you wanted to merge the audio part, after it's edited, I don't know. Uh, it's always good to check your work. And there's always something that doesn't go quite right uh, in that process. And, you know, just check it. Just scrub through. Check it. it takes only a few minutes. And trust me, it's way faster than having to do it manually. 
So, okay. So the process here, go down, um, highlight the kick track, go over here under audio, hit detect transients. It picks up all these transients. Now I ran into an issue with this session. Um, I thought when we tracked, I had the kick pretty well isolated from the snare, but I was running it through like a preamp compressor. I think the uh, UA710D. Um, and uh, I got a fair amount of bleed of the snare through the kick mic um, to where it, like this hit right here, if you listen to it, that's just a snare hit. That's not an actual, there's no kick there. It's just that snare came through strong. So it's picking up that transient thinking it's a kick. Um, so the best way to do it is, you know, you can kind of pull the threshold back and it does a pretty decent job of taking out those snare hits, um, because they're slightly less intense than the, or quite a bit less intense than the kick. They're just, the waveform is pretty big, um, because it is squashed down and compressed. That's how compression works kind of. Uh, so, I mean, there's times I feel like that's actually pretty decent as far as not picking up the ones I want versus the ones that do like, let's say this situation, it's not quite what I want. It's picking up this hit right here. That's not a kick hit. This is a kick hit. It's just a weaker kick hit. So how do I fix that? I go over up in this section. There's these icons. If you hit the one key on Mac should be same PC. It allows me to go through and uh, change what my secondary function is. And the secondary function happens whenever you hit command. So uh, whatever this is highlighted on, when I hit hold down command, that's what pops up. So it's, I usually alternate between that and the cut tool, depending on what I need. So in this situation, I'm going to go through here. I'm on the audio bin tool, which uh, you can manually add these transients or take them away. So command, click that, hit delete. That one is gone go in here, add that one in because that's the way it should be. That's what I want. So, you know, after you detect transients, go through and check your work again, make sure it's picking up only kick hits and not snare hits. I mean, if it does, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to have that weird, you're going to create two audio regions extremely close together that might cause some overlap and crossfade issues that you'll have to manually correct later. So, you know, might as well fix it up front versus, uh, you know, having to do more work later. So here's a few kick transients I didn't pick up. So I just ran manually punched them in. Same here. And it kind of latches to the front of the transient. So it's not like I'm not having to, you don't have to be super on a point when you're with your clicking. But anyway. Okay, so that was actually a tom hit. Man. Yeah. In retrospect, I think I was slamming that kick pretty pretty, pretty nicely. But it sounded so good. I, I was just, you know, in the moment when you're tracking, it's, I tried to trust my gut. And if it sounded good in the moment, I just roll with it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty good. It's not perfect because I didn't spend the time, but I recommend spending the time. This is just an example. Um, so I just do, it's rinse and repeat, same thing on uh, the snare, detect transients. Um, this one didn't have a lot of bleed from anything else, so this came through a lot easier. Uh, you know, there may be a few kick hits, may dra drag it back a little bit on some things. Just to make sure it's only picking up snare hits. And I would do the same thing. I'd go through and make sure it picked up the snare hits I wanted to. Sometimes during fills, you don't want it to pick up every snare hit because you want that life to be there. You don't want it to be completely gridded. Um, and oftentimes, fills, I kind of leave them alone. Like I just kind of uh, let them uh, let them be a little bit, you know, because it's I picked up some random transients here. I don't know why that's the case. Am I actually take this one out it's probably two different takes like, there's some overlap because I, I edited all this and I had to go back and kind of uh, drag them out the audio out to where it wasn't edited anymore uh, just to show you guys so there might be some little quirks along the way because only for that reason okay so we're looking pretty good I went back and let's say I spent all the time to check both the kicking snare make sure all the transients are detected properly um, now what you want to do is, you know, hold shift down, 
uh, select all tracks and group all tracks. And you can say, call that drums. Command G does the same thing. So that means when you select any one of these tracks, it selects them as if they're one track. It groups them all together. Pretty self-explanatory. Now we go back up to this menu that I was talking about earlier. And I think stock, all these are highlighted. In uh, this case, you want to make sure only the kick and snare or whatever your guides are are checked. And I use a kick and snare because they had the fastest transient um, response. And also that's the foundation of the beat. So kick and snare, foundation of your groove. So it's what everything else is latching to. So everything stays in phase alignment. Otherwise, if you just shifted the kick and snare on its own without everything else, the kick and snare picked up by the other mics, you know, are still going to come through those mics, even if it's not prevalent um, or as up front. It's just going to sound weird and like drums everywhere and be awful. Uh, so you don't want that. And that's what you're avoiding here. Okay, so everything. So in this case, I'll select all of these and I'll hit apply. Okay, so everything is uh, pretty well cleanly edited for you. And then I just go through... You know, you and go through and make sure everything sounds good. And I have it on eighth, quantized to eighth notes um, for this groove. It's in six eight. That usually works best for a lot of things. More open groove. If it's something more technical and more precise, or there's like blast beats or something, sixteenth um, or thirty second notes might be the better thing to quantize. And in those more technical situations, sometimes it's better to take it section by section. Um, I've been in those cases where it's been a lot more intricate and tedious. And I just kind of do it one section at a time, depending on what the drummer's playing in that section. Uh, this song is insanely simple and not, you know, there's no real technical drum beats. There's a few fills, you know, and, uh, oh, here's a spot where kind of had a weird audio crossfade. So go then fix that. And here's a fill where it didn't really pick up many kick transients, but that's fine because usually... I like Phil's to have that, you know, a little bit of a feel in the fill, if that makes sense. Um, here's another one. So let's say for this, you know, it didn't go through and pick up many of the transients very well for whatever reason. Um, it probably has more to do with the fact that I had all the takes, uh, I didn't, I didn't sound what I wanted to do. Several takes in this session, but you know, you could do one or two, a couple things. Uh, I'll take that out. I kind of work a little bit backwards. I kind of, I start from where I know I'm going to end and I know I want that. It looks like that kind of tends to be where things are going to land. Um, and so I actually start there. And then if it's a section I'm going to manually edit, like a fill, I'll actually start where, get that lined where I want it to go. And then I kind of work my way forward. So, okay. And then I'll select my one key to where it's the cut tool. And I know that one land on the one. Um, I know this is kind of a triplet situation and I'm sure I could, if I wanted to, uh, what would that be? Triplet. Yeah, there we go. So this is kind of a triplet section. So I have it to 16th note triplet. And if I wanted it gridded, I'd kind of go along here. I'm doing slip editing, which is basically if you hold down command option, um, it allows you to drag the audio region within the boundaries already set for it. And so you don't have to move the actual audio boundary. Um, I don't know. Is that in some situations it's like, is that forward back? What, what is that? You know, and I select all these to 
where it's the logarithmic fade in just because it sounds more natural and it doesn't, um, it fades very smoothly. So you just hover over it and then you can kind of drag up and down, change it to logarithmic fade. And let's see where we stand here. You know, it's kind of that duh, 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 like a triple, a triple, a triple, a triple, you know, that type of thing. So you, know, you, you kind of have just to know the song and know what each section calls for and what you're, you know, it helps a lot if the drummer is super there. Um, so. But honestly, that's that's it. You just go through and check your work, make sure everything's good, drag things, uh, you slip at it, super helpful. Makes your life way easier. I mean, that if there's anything that I missed, comment down below and I'll answer your questions in the comments or if I need to make another video, I'll do it. Um, it's kind of funny, last time I had a good friend of mine that had played in a band, my first like metal band I played in years ago. He actually... After I made that last video, he reached out to me. He, he commented on YouTube and sent me a text and was like, dude, I was just dealing with this. It was a nightmare editing drums and your video helped me out so much. That just made me feel awesome. It made me feel great. So I love hearing that type of feedback. And I also, you know, constructive criticism. It's like, hey, I would want to know more about this or the, this was kind of unclear what's going on here. I love all that feedback. Put it down below. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll do my best to tackle it or I'll hit up Eric. If it's in like Cubase or something else that I'm not as familiar with, maybe Eric will can help there too. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Producer Dudes, we're going to try our best to generate more content for you guys as, we, as time is kind of freeing up. Um, I hope this was a helpful update for Studio One 5 drum editing. Um, I appreciate you watching as always. Have a great day, night, or whatever it is where you're at. Bye.